Hello there again, everybody. Going to be doing something a little bit different today. This is going to be the Mana Traders uh, tournament series um, for September. Uh, September's tournament structure is modern, so I'm going to play it. And uh, this is this is as a result going to be my my no nonsense list. Not going to be playing anything that I'm personally not confident in. Um, so I'll quickly go over the changes I've made. Uh, I'm playing no Seasons Pyromancer. I'm still not really confident in that card's ability to really turn games. Um, it, it's obviously a fine top deck in matchups where it's good, where you're in a top deck war. But lots of things would be good top decks in a top deck war, so I don't really give it a point um, in, in that category. Um, my sort of flex spot threats... Uh, I'm playing, I brought back second copy of Scavenging Ooze, um, because as we'll go over in the metagame analysis, um, I think this card is particularly strong, and I've just had to cut it to cut to bring in more of the, uh, not janky, but less popular cards like the Season Pyromancer. Um, and I'm also playing a single copy of Tireless Tracker. I really like Tireless Tracker because of its ability to snowball and win a game on its own, whereas something like Season Pyromancer may not be able to. Season Pyromancer really good at the short term. Uh, card advantage if it's in an ideal scenario, but um, in most scenarios where you're mid to late game, Tireless Tracker can really snowball and uh, win the game on its own, and if it doesn't have the ability to snowball, it, it may at least be able to replace itself or even go plus one. Uh, I brought back 4th Bloodbraid Elf as another one of my higher end threats because uh, I think the the two for one and uh, the, uh, the immediate two for one value and haste is going to be super popular right now. Um, and that's about it in terms of what I've done in the main. I've changed the sideboard up a bit. Uh, I've been consistently impressed with the Bitter Blossoms, so I'm keeping two of those in my no-nonsense list. Also playing two Damping Spheres because Tron has been popping up, as well as we've seen a spike in the various Amulet Titan builds. Alpine Moon, another way to combat Tron and Amulet Titan, as well as against uh, Uro decks, you can name things like Field of the Dead or Valakut the Molten Pinnacle. Um, there's lots of prowess, be it blue red or mono red, going around, and against those decks, I'm going to really, really want another Fatal Push. Um, we've obviously got lots of access to kill spells in the main deck, so this isn't necessarily like fairly unique card um, with a unique effect, like maybe Clothis or Ashiok. But um, I, I like being able to just tune the deck just a little bit more to beat the prowess decks, especially since the matchup can be pretty close at times. Um, the ways I've had I have currently to combat the graveyard include two Nile Spell Bomb, the Clothis, and the Ashiox. Ashiox also having great utility versus mid range matchups if the opponent has something graveyard oriented going on, and also versus things like. Um, Amulet Titan that search, that seek to put a Primeval Titan into play and search for a bunch of lands that you can't beat. Ashiok stops that pretty nicely. And then Collective Brutality, obviously just a great tool against Prowess and versus the various aggro and burn strategies where you just need another removal spell or a way to gain life or take an instant or sorcery. It kind of just does it all. Um, and then I also like it versus the various um, control decks where it may be better than Inquisition of Kozilek. Where it was, you, you can't take things like Factor Fiction and Cryptic Command with Inquisition, but you can with Collective Brutality. Um, and additionally, it doesn't really miss anything that Inquisition of Kozilek doesn't already miss. Things like Jace the Mind Sculptor and Teferi Hero of Dominaria, the like. Anything big, really. So let's take a quick look at the metagame breakdown. We've got Uropiles still in at first. Luris Aggro stuck in at second spot for a few days now. Um, and Blue Red Blitz also all, has been in the top three for quite a while now. Uh, Amulet Titan, as I mentioned, seeing a spike in that, so I have brought in a few extra sideboard cards, uh, namely uh, the Damping Spheres, the Ashiox, the Alpine Moons, and uh, to a degree Clothis if they're playing um, Uro, which some are I've seen. Uh, Jund, our hero, in fifth, what we're playing today. Tron, also slightly on the uptick. We brought in some Damping Spheres and Alpine Moons um, to help combat those. Blue-White Control and Grill Midrange, pretty much top 8 mainstayers. And then down in the 9 through 12 slots, we've had we've had Dredge, Mono Red, and White Green, which have been pretty much around this area, but we've seen an uptick in Bogles, which uh, we, we, we tend to have a pretty good matchup uh, against by default, as long as the opponent doesn't have a Leyline of Sanctity to stop our Hand Disruption and also the Edicts with our Liliana's of the Veil. So 
With that said, um, I'm probably going to be recording these videos and uploading them to YouTube in chunks of between three and four um, matches because there's not a typical league structure. So um, I'm just going to do between three or four matches and in the title of the video I'll just label how many matches and which number of matches um, are going to be depicted in that particular video. So I'm going to prompt mana traders to get me in. My deck is ready, play now. Alright, so it is pairing me, which I, I see off to the side on my other screen. Alright, we got someone. I have to create the match. So, I haven't played in one of these series in a long time, so it may take me a second to re-familiarize myself with how to get it going. I think it's a two-player queue. So constructed, modern format. Also, really briefly, this To get my computer replugged in. Um, all right, so I'm going to constructed modern format, modern tournament practice. Uh, creates and then waiting for the name. There we go. Creates. And the wrong person joined our thing. So let's try this again. Yeah, and it looks like the uh, the correct player actually briefly joined to uh, to watch. All right, so let's uh, try this again. It looks like they jumped into a match too. Alright, well, create, and hopefully the right person joins this time. Hey, we got him. <laughs> Point says, there we go, yeah. Drazi Tron. Alright, well, I should have Inquisitioned first. I saw the Thought Season got excited. But uh, I should probably just take the Thought Knot Seer here. Um, just keep him off threats. Next turn, I can Inquisition to take, I guess, Chalice. I'll Ravine on top of it. They'll, they'll have a route to Tron here, but I don't think that's as important as versus normal Tron. So not a huge tragedy, but still a slight misstep as I get situated with everything. They've drawn a Mind Stone. The Chalice actually not 
really guaranteed to be doing a whole lot moving forward, whereas Dismember can take can kill one of my creatures. Mindstone also redraw at one point, but probably all it is, considering they're not gonna have a shortage of mana. I kind of like just taking the removal spell here, so I'll do that. I'm trying to get my task bar to go away. It was just working. Let's see if that works. Doesn't look like it. All right. Well, there's the tower. Ooh's not a bad draw. Just something I can do is welcome here. It also makes me glad that I uh, took the dismember. Hmm, that should do it. No, I guess not. I'm still trying to get this task bar to go away. The settings are a little confusing to me. Alright, there's the stone. We played the mine. Reshaper is on the annoying side. Alright, so we know the hand. So hopefully we get to just start blood braiding here. All right, and overgrown tomb is the color combination duel we're missing. So let's just grab one of those. All right, we hit the land, so we can just start blood braiding, which is which is nice. Uh, I think I'm okay just getting swamp here. I do have an ooze in play, but not a lot of of good food. So I think I think I'll just get basic swamp. We do have revolt if we hit a push here. Run in six, not bad. I think I'm inclined to just buy a land back. And then, as far as attacking is concerned, I think I should I should probably just attack, get their thing out of the way. I mean, it, they'll probably attack me, in which case I'll want to I'll want to be able to block anyway. I don't want to just take hits for free. I don't think they're, they're they're missing their big payoff, and this gives them another look at it. But if their thing dies in combat on their turn, they'll have a main phase to get it through anyway. <laughs> All right, reshaper, annoying. So now I have to determine if I want to uh, just let the reshaper hit me. Probably should. Now that there are lots of creatures in the yard, my ooze can actually grow grow and outsize it. Maybe since my setting bar is on the other screen, it's just like doing it for that screen. What happens if I move it? That's the same. Yeah, if you want. yeah, if you if you can help, that'd be good. My taskbar is stuck. And like all, there's like five settings that all mean like almost the same thing, so it confuses me. Sorry, what do you mean your task? Like, see how the taskbar is here? Mm. I'm trying to get it to shrink down. Oh, I just locked it. Sorry. Here, these are the options. Uh, it should just be on the front. No, it's not that. It's up. It's up top somewhere. It's it's some combination of this crap. No, I think it had to. I got it. Yeah, I messed with it. What? I don't. We don't have really time to mess with it right now. I'm in the middle of the match. Mm -hmm. Like I can just do it later. It's not a big deal. Wrong screen, but yeah. We'll just do it later. I need the mouse back. Thank you, thank you though. How did I do it last time? Did you click something that undid it? No, I didn't change anything. It just decided to change itself. Sorry, 
All right, well, we get to blood braid and take care of the Karn. Unfortunately, Sky Sovereign's gonna get to uh, give us the hands. I, I really want to get this Karn dead, and uh, blood braid achieves that pretty nicely. So let's just do that. Ooh, and Liliana, not bad. So now the question is, do we want to Edict with Liliana, or do we want to plus it? Um, edicting with Liliana means that they may not necessarily have a way to animate the Sky Sovereign, which is a pretty significant plus. So I should, I should probably go with that high upside play. I just really hope they don't spike a creature between this card and their next card, and they don't. Alright, so if they can't crew the Sky Sovereign exactly this turn, we can pulse the Sky Sovereign and have a terminate for the first big thing, and we could be in it. But if, if, they, hit a, if they hit a creature here, we're going to be in uh, big duty. Is Sky Sovereign a normal include? In the sideboard, yes, because you can get it with Karn. It, it, in spots like this, it tends to just run people over, so it's pretty good. Jeez, all right, well, they hit the Thought Knot. So Thought Knot can, uh, I guess, take Pulse because uh, Pulse deals with the Sky Sovereign. Terminate also deals with the Sky Sovereign, but they have to crew it first. They get to kill both walkers if they want. So yeah, I really needed to dodge a creature there. Alright, then Chalice on 2 eliminates my Terminate. Alright, well that was our best draw, probably by a lot. Um... We know the opponent's last card is Eldrazi Temple, so I guess we have to figure out what modes are best on this Kologon's command. If we shatter the Chalice, we turn Terminate back on, but we, we, we may also want to just shatter the Sky Sovereign. We can do it all by, by shattering the Chalice of the Void and then returning like a Blood Braid um, after they've crewed, and then when they go to attack, we can then terminate the Sky Sovereign before that happens. I, and I, I do want to plus this Liliana such that um, we have another Edict on board for the Thought Knot. So I can plus first, and I have to uh, just be okay discarding the land here. Now I'm going to have to be care careful that I don't tap out of all my red. I, I could also just like draw step it so they discard the card here. Is it worth draw stepping it? That means I'm not getting back a blood braid, but it means I get to dodge whatever it is they're drawing, and then I could I could immediately um, activate ravine, and be able to go online that way. The issue with that play is they'll get they're gonna get to uh, activate their thought knot. They're, they're gonna get to activate the sky sovereign with the thought knot, right? So like if I if I do this draw step, kill this, have them discard, they'll still activate they'll still activate sky sovereign. That's actually okay for me though. Then we're in a top deck war where I have a Raging Ravine, and I've, I'm also drawing an additional card. So I think I like doing this draw step. It means I'm not getting back Blood Braid, but I have a Raging Ravine in play, and this keeps the board empty. The only difficult thing is what if they just attack with the Thought Knots here and don't crew the Sky Sovereign, which they, they probably will know how to do. 
because they know they know of my terminate. So I think I actually just need to dodge this draw step and then use the Colagon's command to blow up the chalice. And get back Blood Braid. So the hope here again is that they animate Sky Sovereign and don't draw a ridiculous creature. Like if they just draw a land here, I could be very ahead after my Blood Breed. All right, and they're going for the crew. So at the beginning of combat, we'll we'll do this. So return a creature, destroy an artifact. Let's get back a Blood Braid and destroy the Chalice. Making sure to leave up Terminate mana. And then we'll get rid of the Sky Sovereign while it's a creature. Alright, well they drew it they drew a nutty one, unfortunately. So we can Blood Braid and see what we hit, and then still have the Lightning Bolt available, which is probably the only play that we have. Tracker. Okay. And now I can Edict the opponent. If they sacrifice their spirit, I can kill the Ugin with the Bolt, which is not nothing, but I'm still behind to a top deck war. Then I'll just do this now. Uh, should I have edicted first in case I hit second Lily since you're edicting the other one? Um, yeah, small consideration, I suppose. I, I think I liked getting the information of uh, whatever I'm drawing first. It's, it's kind of close. Jeez, and they draw Smasher. Alright, so let's, I mean, we can think through that line um, while we're, while I'm sideboarding. I just don't really have time to do it now since I was trying to set up the, um, these issues here. Alright, so now I'm kind of forced to uh, double block with a ravine and a blood breed. But yeah, but I think you're right though because um, the, the opponent's hellbent, right? Alright, well, they've just been drawing hot as Etron tends to do. So, like, they were hellbent, so the plus didn't really do anything anyway. The only real consideration to uh, wanting to plus on my end would have been to keep the Liliana around at three. Alright, I'm still not sure that Damping Sphere is going to be good enough. Bitter Blossom might be, though. Don't think I want to bring in Fatal Pushes. Damping Sphere might be good enough on the play. I don't think we want Alpine Moon. I mean, I guess I guess Alpine Moon may actually be better than Damping Sphere when just comparing the two. This shuts off Tron, but it also shuts off their various utility lands. Like, if I'm worried about Scavenger Grounds, I could turn it off that way. I guess let's see how many things I want to take out. Definitely want to take out Kling. That doesn't do anything. Um... I mean, honestly, that's about the only thing that I I'm, I really want to take out. Maybe I want to shave a Renin Six because they don't do a whole lot. I can bring in like one moon for that. But if I wanted to bring in this other moon, maybe I could like shave an Inquisition. All right, and then while we've got a minute, let's uh see if I can get the stupid thing to work. I don't want it locked. Does that fix it? 
No. Automatically hide the de desk taskbar in desktop mode. Well, I'm in desktop mode, so you would think it would automatically hide. That doesn't do it either. We're, we're not in tablet mode, so that doesn't matter. What if I did this combination? They make it so confusing. I'm probably just being stupid about it. But uh, I just don't know how to get it to work. And I was doing it before, but then I restarted my computer and then it like auto updated and I think it reset. Why do you keep resizing this? I'm not even talking about the screen right now. Let's go first. Keep. We've got a bitter blossom. For now, we're going to have to deal with the taskbar down here. Blood braid a solid pickup. So the opponent playing Temple on turn 1 may indicate that they've drawn a Thought Knots here because we know that they've got two of the Tron lands so they may have just wanted to uh, try to spike the Tron land. So I, I wouldn't at all be surprised if their next turn's play was Thought Knot in which case I want to sh shock in a Stomping Ground to be able to terminate. So let's do that. Uh... The screen, oh, this green icon, you may be right. Let's try that. Wow, you're a genius. All right, and as suspected, there's the Thought Knot, so pretty glad that I shocked because we want this thing dead. All right, but now, uh, now there's a little space at the bottom. All right, so let's try that now. All right, so that, re no, it didn't relock it. Alright, I'll, I'll figure that out after the match, but thanks for the tip because it's definitely helping so far. Alright, what did they take even? I wasn't paying attention. Scroll down. What if I uh, did this and then this? Haha, -ha. we're online. Sweet. Yes, this is Mana Traders, Nick. So our combination of Blood Braid and, well, just Blood Braid by itself will be enough to uh, kill the Karn. You get a worm coil. Alright, so if they spike Tron Land, we're in a, a world of hurt. Alright, so if I mountain first, I can hold up a fatal push, which I should probably do. Like, if I hit Scavenging Ooze, I'll want to have a uh, Stomping Ground available. There's not really anything that I know I can fatal push now either. I don't even have Revolt, so it's probably better to just leave up the green in case I had to use. Alpine Moon. Alright, well that can at least turn off the Tron and ensure that Worm Coil isn't a thing until at least another turn. Um, so I, I guess I just name it Tron Land and I should name Tower because it's the one they don't have. Don't want to give them colored mana if they need it for any reason. 
Where's this tower? Unfortunately, they just play a few more lands and they get to play it anyway. Oh, you don't know what that is? Um, so every every month, Mana Traders has a uh, a series that it's free to enter. Um, but to to get into the actual like big event, you have to qualify for it, and uh, you can do so by um, playing in their qualification matches. You set up a match through Mana Traders, and then you do a direct challenge on Magic Online, and then uh, and then what happens? is um, you play that match, it'll automatically record the result and then upload it to your your mana traders database. And then if you if you if you go seven and ten, if you have a seventy percent win rate within ten matches, um, you automatically qualify. Um, if you go if you have a sixty five percent win rate within twenty matches, um, which is thirteen and seven, you qualify. Or after those twenty matches, if at any time you have a sixty percent win rate, um, you also qualify that way. And then the the thing you qualify for takes place at the on the last Saturday of the month. All right, so I may end up having to do something pretty cute here, which is when they when they eventually start getting their um, their worm coil going. I may need to uh, to buy time, block with a rogue, and then push the rogue so they don't gain the life. But the issue there is um, they're going to get to uh, it just attack me back. Yeah, it's fun, and it's free, so it's it's nice. Doesn't look like I'm going to be 1-0, though, right, really, really fast. Yeah, I think I played the first game pretty much as well as I could have. The turn one missed up of Thoughtseize before Inquisition ended up not mattering because I think the decisions would not have changed. But yeah, gonna gonna need to find a, a way to kill the worm coil. But then even even then, um Gotta get rid of the tokens. Alright, and back up Alpine Moon, not not exactly a way to do it. This does turn off blast zone, which means my goif can still be a thing. So uh, I guess I'll just do that. I mean, this is what I was talking about too. Like, it turns off the Tron, but it, it can also turn off Blast Zone or stuff like Scavenger Grounds. So now it only makes mana. And I can attack with uh, my four flying creatures. And then I can I can plan on blocking with the, 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 the Fairy Rogue that's staying back. And then I can push it so they don't get... Um, life from lifelink They're not dead on crackback. We're off by one, but we can repeat this play. And uh, their dismember kind of shut off because they are at 10. If we can grow this Goyf in any way, we do just kill him, which is nice. Right, unfortunately, we cannot grow the Goyf. Um, so now I think think I should probably attack with Goyf and three of the rogues. That puts them to two. If I attack with everything they, and they like spatial contortion, my last fairy, it's a big disaster. So I think I should be attacking with all but two rogues. Leave one back. Jam. And again, they can't dismember because that puts them too low. Yeah, I'm also soft to a Thought Knot Seer here, which is unfortunate. Alright, and uh, I think they know that our last card is Fatal Push from way back when. When they Thought Knotted us. We kept a hand with two pushes in it, so. 
Mm-hmm. They have black mana and they have black mana. That's true. I forgot about that. I'm giving them the black mana they need. Yeah, rough. All right, so now if they have a spatial contortion, we're going to get licked for six. Yeah, that's true, Big Daddy Snow. I mean, even if they spatial contortion me here, I could be okay. What is this? They got Ugin? If they have Ugin, it just straight doesn't matter. Ballista. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess. Alright, so now they get to kill everything. So it just didn't matter then, huh? Alright, we're still live to the lightning bolt, right? Because, like, if I, if I push this ballista to get it out of the way of the goyf, they, they're, they're kind of forced to, uh... Throw all the fairy to throw out all the fairies right now. But yeah, Ballista was very good for them. So yeah, I mean if we draw a bolt, they do just die. Bloodbraid does it as well. We're short on a Colagon's command, being able to buy back a Bloodbraid. So we need we need Bloodbraid or Bolt. Alright, took the whole team, but it did it. Yeah, man, bolts. Whew. Alright, so uh, now that we've got all of the, uh, the various task bars hidden, hopefully I can play a game undistracted. Alright, so do I want an Inquisition on the draw? I don't think so. I mean, it's possible I should be shaving some number of fatal pushes. I, I like the lightning bolts because you can finish off the Karns with them. I mean, you, you kind of accept the two for one at that point, but... I still don't think I want Damping Sphere over the Alpine Moon. I think Alpine Moon is probably better. We saw that. I think I'm just going to resubmit and pray. But yeah, Bitter Blossom did some work there. It's worse on the draw though, which is where we're at right now. No Ashiok. The opponent doesn't search their library very often. It's not like a uh, regular Tron. This hand is sticky. So we we have an answer to a turn one thought not. We've got the Liliana. Not turn the turn two thought knot if that if it becomes a thing we've got the Liliana for a follow up threat unless we get thought knotted we've got tracker which is one of our better threats it's not great but I think it's a keep we got bitter blossom too all right all right so I think I'm gonna want to keep a fetch available um, to enable a revolt. Um, but I do want to fetch now. Uh, I think I'm more likely to want to fetch a basic swamp, even though I've got one in my hand. So I guess I should lead on foothills. And they can't turn to thought not me, so that's good. So I think I'm getting blood crypt. Don't have red yet. I've got lots of black spells. So I can get like blood crypt and play a swamp. Right, well, if they, if, it, if they had just natural Tron, then it's going to be a little difficult. I mean, luckily, if, if their play is Thought Knot, we've got multiple answers to it. We've got Revolted Fatal Push, and we have the Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Alright, please no natural Tron. When they keep a 7, you always got to think they have it, right? Well, they don't. Okay, so you're telling me there's a chance. All right, Lilian is nice. So I mean, I I gotta think they they have a hand with some amount of removal in it. So I, I'm not really wanting to play the tracker now, but I do want to get down a threat. So Liliana seems like the uh, the perfect tool for that, and I want to save the verdant for post tracker to get multiple clues. So I think I'm just gonna do it off of a peatland. 
It'll be unfortunate if they have a Smasher, but I do have backup Liliana to deal with that. So uh, I'll discard the push. We've got multiple answers to the Thought Knot now, including one on board. Ravine may need to start attacking, so I don't think I want to discard that yet. I may discard it next turn. Alright, and then I guess what's your first play? Alright, well they don't have any like fast mana yet. They don't they don't have Tron completed. Alright, and if this is if this is Thought Knot, that's fine. We've got Liliana in play already. They may just take the tireless tracker, because it's our it's our threat. But I mean we've got Bitter Blossom in play already. Bitter Blossom's a clock over time. It's like, what do you want to take? Our removal spell or our our, our, uh, our sticky threat? All right, they want to take our removal spell. Okay. All right, I, I think I'm just going to snap off an Edict here. Unlikely to change my, uh, my course of play, but I want to keep the board empty. Not great. All right, so let's just get the tracker in. Uh, I could I could even play Ravine here because that that opens up the possibility of attacking with the Ravine next turn. Kind of like it because like if they're using the turn to kill the tracker, um, then I can hit them with the Ravine and really start pressuring them. Yeah, let's let's do it. And like if they reality smasher me here, it's unfortunate. But uh, they they have to hit the Liliana, or the Liliana just kills it. Ballista, alright, well Ballista gets to kill the Liliana as well. Yeah, they may just want to kill it all, full full kill it immediately, yep. Alright, so now we have the ability to attack with the ravine, like I mentioned, and I think we do. It's a really hard hit. Alright, so I think I'm just going to get... I guess I have to get basic swamp here. I don't want to pay too much life with my Bitter Blossom in play, and we've already got the forest. So I think I'm just going to fetch basic swamp. Activate. Red. Green. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I mean, the opponent did keep a 7-card hand. Um, they, they've missed the land drop. So I, I gotta think that the, the worst case scenario for us now is they can complete the Tron and then just dump a bunch of stuff. We did it. So we took down the Eldrazi Tron. All right, so let's uh, real fast. I'm gonna get my side screens oriented now that we've got it how we want it. All right, why did it do that? I don't know. All right, so let's get this updated now. Current record, properties, one. Well, bam. All right, so now let's requeue. All right, we got a match. Alexi four. Yeah, we've got a keeper. Ooh, elves. All right, this matchup has to be good. All right, so we'll just bolt the bird turn one. 
Not a bird, but still good. And then next turn we can we can double hand disrupt. But yeah, I think elves traditionally should be a pretty good matchup. Things like Renin Six just gonna be too much for them to handle, killing something every single turn. They played this last turn off of Guilt Leaf, so we don't actually know anything about their hand. They got double Coco, huh? Or we can take one of them. I think I will just get basic here. I've got the the uh, the verdant to get basic forest when I want, and they could beat me down. So their hand is one company. So any land lets them cast it. Any elf lets them cast it because they can tap all their heritage druids. Actually, land doesn't do it. <laughs> that keeps them at three. So yeah, only only a one mana elf would have done it there. Even even a two mana elf would have done it. All right. Unfortunately, not drawing super hot. We can we can cling to dust now. See if we find our other thoughtsies. Probably should. We've got nothing else going. We don't. All right, let's just get the ravine down. Say go. All right, so now any land lets them company. Any elf lets them company. That one comes tapped though. Huh. All right, so uh, they're going to company next turn, assuming we don't thought seize. So we've gotten pretty lucky to fade this company, but I mean it's it's imminent now as long as we don't find our our one other copy of thought seize. Meyer is not that copy of Thoughtseize, so let's just blood braid and see what happens. Best case scenario here has to be Maelstrom Pulse. Her hands all land, so Whew. all right, Liliana, not bad, actually excellent, because this will this will plus and uh, get the collected company out of the hand that way. And I think I may even want to hold back the blood braid to uh, defend the Liliana. It was like I can Edict next turn and keep the Liliana around um, if I can uh, block one of these Heritage Druids. So Liliana, pretty pretty excellent hit. Alright, then and now at this point the opponent, a lot of the opponent's draws are, are things like this. They still have two companies in the deck. I'm, I'm assuming they're also playing things like uh, Court of Calling, which would be pretty scary. But I'm, I'm just going to, uh, while they're in top deck mode, get their critical mass down. If they don't kill the Liliana, I'm just going to pop off another Edict next turn. And it's possible I want to start attacking, which I will. Um, if they go for the double attack on the Liliana, I'll activate the Ravine. And if they don't, I can uh, escape a Cling to Dust. Like I need to start hitting them at some point, so it's possible I want to um, start attacking with the ravine, but this way I get to bluff spells in my hand as well. Alright, so they're going to get to kill the Liliana no matter what now, but I do get to eat an elf. So I, I'm, whichever, one I, whichever one I don't block is going to get the pump. But I, I do get to kind of for free eat something. Then I have big attacks on the back on the back hit. So um, if they pop off, um, Heritage Druid is more dangerous, but they're they're very far from popping off. So I think I should just kill the the guaranteed mana source. If they hit a company into like multiple elves. That'd be a way to pop off. Um, but this is probably fine. Ooh, and another Liliana. Well, I should probably just keep their board empty, but this is a this would be a good time to just hit them. The only way I get punished by just not hitting them is I think um, if they draw exactly a third copy of Collected Company. 
I think I want to hit it with the Ravine. Hitting with the Ravine here is for 7, then I can hit for 15 next turn. So it actually doesn't reduce the clock by just getting the Edict in now. So let's just get the Edict in now and play it safe. So we're, we're hoping to fade uh, Collect the Company at this point. <laughs> and we can, we can even be extra safe by simply plussing first. We, we don't want to like attack into it, for example. All right, and now since the hand is empty, the board is empty. Let's get in a get in a thwack with the ravine. Make your 1-1, one, one, lose your life. Please no company. Company is the way we lose. They can attack Liliana and activate Pendlehaven to uh, kill it again. Looks like this is the play. <laughs> nice. Alright, so I think we're just going to Wrath them here. Could activate the Ravine and attack, but the Ravine doesn't actually kill them. They'll block the Blood Braid and they'll go to 1. That turns off Westvale Abbey. But uh, I like I like just keeping the board clear because uh, they're, they're just dead to anything next turn. Like even if they hit Collecting Company, they'd have to, they'd have to block block. Alright, so Fatal Push, excellent. Collected Brutality, excellent. Just more things that kill stuff. And then I'll just take out some stuff that doesn't kill stuff. I did not mean to bring in the Stamping Sphere. Um, I like the Thought Seizes more than Inquisitions, just because Thought Seize has the potential to take Company. Bringing in the Brutality because it takes Company and it also just kills something. This doesn't really look like a Cling to Dust matchup. I'll shave a blood braid just because it's a, it's a lot slower on the play. We want to be able to kill everything. And then I, I could see taking out an Inquisition. We, we boarded in another one mana spell, so we're not necessarily going super low on those. And I, I don't think I want to like over overpopulate on um, hand disruption. Brutality's, Brutality's mode of choice is more likely going to be minus two, minus two on a creature. So maybe that's not even necessarily overpopulating. True Liliana and the Trimlord Liliana in the storm matchup. And the swarm matchup. Yeah, definitely a possibility. I think on the play I'm gonna want the full four. Um, but I, I, I tend to like anything that that results in an opponent's creature dying. Yeah, I I, I can definitely see cutting the Liliana. I think I'm going to cut the Inquisition, though. I, I just really want to keep anything that kills something. Like, on the play, I'll probably bring the Inquisition, Inquisition back in because it's more punishing to take, like, their 1-1 one, one mana play or their 1 Accelerant, for example. But if, if, if something says kill a creature, I, I, I think I'm going to want it. Oof. <laughs> well, if we can guarantee a red land on top, this hand's excellent. But we can't. So let's mulligan. Much better. 
We don't have a turn one play. Um, the thing is, I want the forest for the blood braid, but I also want to keep all this interaction. I think I'm just going to bottom the forest, and if I draw lands, I'm happy, and if I draw spells, I'm happy. A little risky, but we're on the draw. Don't think I want to bottom any of this stuff. All right, come on, one mana play. Nope. All right, don't pop off, please. Uh-oh. This is where they play the Heritage Druid. Shaper Sanctuary, jeez. Shaper Sanctuary is a beating. So like, I can terminate their Elvish Mystic just to keep him off of the fourth mana. It'll draw them a card, but all of my removal spells are drawing them a card. Pretty rough. I mean, I guess I should do it. Cause I don't want to. I don't want to get companyed this turn. Like I'm already getting run over as is. The one, the one series of games where I choose not to play the Plague Engineer. It's still fine. I think the matchup's fine without it, but uh, it's definitely better with it. No denying. Oh, I have to hit okay, don't I? Well, I could Brutality, kill a thing, try to keep him off a of company. I think I really need to just deploy a threat, though. Like, I, like if they didn't have the Shaper Sanctuary, I'd be more inclined to just pick off their stuff. Be like, I could be the, more of the control deck. But if they're just can tripping off every time I kill something, it's really hard to be the control deck. Burn plan, I see. Yeah, I mean, this this kind of kills a creature without letting them draw a card, but they still have three cards. We're at four, and we're very behind. Spell or ability. So they, they do get to draw the card. I mean, I guess I'll play the thing that blocks as opposed to um, targets. Get all my trades in, I guess. I guess I have to triple mode this thing, huh? Winding way and Veil of Summer. Yeah, I guess I'll take their card advantage. And then I'm going to one. <laughs> Alright, well, I had to do it.
So now that we're on the play again, I think Inquisition gets better. We know they're playing Veil, vale, but it's kind of hard to not play our cards just because Veil vale is good. I mean, all of our cards are, are, are pretty solid. Maybe maybe Ooze is just the weakest threat. Going to have to be careful not to go too low on threats, though, because like at some point I need to also win the game. So yeah, maybe maybe it is just better to uh, shave the one thing, but they have they have shapers shapers sanctuary now, so it gets even more important to like try to kill to to try to disrupt them on one. Right, you know what? Let's let's take out the Colagon's command. It's by far the weakest removal spell. It costs the most and two damage doesn't kill a whole lot. I like the Liliana's because like those also plus. I think Liliana probably better than a Colagon's command. Also, Liliana can kill two things if you give it time, whereas Kate Command will only ever kill one. Ren and six on the play. Kinda kinda hard to to argue with that. Alright, and the Vernon Catacombs is my worst fetch here because uh I've already got the forest in hand. So the the ideal scenario here is the opponent goes turn one mana dork. Like that. And then we can run and six it away. Not bad, but let's kill the accelerant and get a planeswalker in play. Alright, and let's hope to dodge the uh, Shaper Sanctuary. If for, if for whatever reason they were sandbagging it for turn two, which they might have because they had lots of mana. Right, well, they don't get an elf. Alright, so uh, this is taking a turn for the better. Tracker, an excellent draw. So I think I want to lead on Inquisition. Um, if I tap the Blood Crypt, it kind of tells the opponent I don't have a Lightning Bolt if I then main, if I then play Swamp second main, which I do plan on playing Swamp because I want the fetch for post Tracker. So yeah, I'm definitely playing Swamp, so let's just play that first. Alternatively... I could uh, scavenging ooze and then and then eat the elf to make my three three block their uh, their two two profitably and keep the run alive. But we get to keep the run alive anyway. Let's just swamp inquisition. Wow. All right. Well, I'm glad I did that now. And if they attack the Ren, I'll block it. Or is that even true? Maybe not. I'm, I'm going to want to start abyssing them, abyssing them pretty soon. So yeah, it looks like they kept a pretty speculative hand and just like haven't hit very well. Alright, and that's something we get to kill with the Ren and Six. I think I'm going to take back what I said. I think I am going to block. Reason being is uh, we get to stonewall this elf as is, and if we can keep the Renin Six in play um, to uh, continuously edict them, or not edict them, just kill all of their X ones, I think that's the spot we're winning, and I've got lots of backup threats. Say okay, Pendlehaven's gonna defend their thing, not for super long. We're gonna get to Tracker now. Um, we could just Blood Breed. Um, actually pretty close so I think I'm I think I'm edging on, on the side of blood braid reason being is we get to defend the run and six with it um, also um, our mana is gonna be set up in a way that we're not really um, having time to activate clues although that may be a mistake not to just get as many clues into play as possible 
The issue is like if I play tracker now, I can fetch shock. I can fetch, just get the land tapped, plus they're gonna attack the run in six for two. But then I've still got a run on two and I on top of the tracker in play. Yeah, let's let's get the tracker down to not be super greedy. The the plus side of the blood braid would be like what if it hits a removal or another good threat? Alright, so let's get I guess stomping ground now. Just makes the most sense. I do want to do this now because I do want to buy a land back. Minusing on the Mystic, not really doing much with the Pendlehaven in play. And then if, if they attack the if they attack the run in six and they want to use their Pendlehaven to uh, hit their end for two, I'm just gonna let that happen. Still still want to dodge Collected Company. Collected Company is worst case. I mean, but their hand is also. As far as we know, best case. Westville Abbey may get annoying at some point, but not yet. Ooze. Okay, Ooze is annoying. That's going to uh, stymie the, the Renin Six's ability to buy back lands. And they're all, <laughs> there's going to be lots of creatures in the yard. All right, they're going for it. All right, so now I can block, though, which will force them to uh, Pendlehaven. But I, I don't want to block with the tracker. I want the tracker in play. Tracker is gonna get big. They're just letting it get hit for one. That makes some sense. Maybe they just want to have the green available. But yeah, I need to start drawing removal. That's not removal. Um, I mean, I guess I'm just gonna lead on. Lead on the blood breed. See where that can get me. I'll get basic swamp. I think I want to keep up a stomping ground in case I hit an ooze. They've got theirs in play, but I can at least make it awkward for them. Get some more clues. Do the thing that I mentioned, which is leave up stomping ground. Alright, so removal spell would be king here. Liliana counts. Then that sacrifice makes sense. So they can eat they can eat two things. Make their thing a 4-4, which means I don't really have a good attack. If I if I plus lead a land, though, which means I could have a good attack. So let's plus. Try to get this back. They may eat it in response. They don't. Alright, so they, their plan is to eat two creatures. Alright, so let's just pass. I mean, a little on the flooded side. If the opponent hits company, they could they could get back into this pretty easily. This this ooze was a pretty significant hit. Like, had it been anything smaller, the run in six may be able to handle it. All right, so that means they're not companying this turn. So I don't have a double block. This is going at Liliana. Yeah, I'm not gonna throw multiple creatures in the way of it to um, to try to load back up a uh, an edict. So let's just let the Liliana perish. They're just passing. Okay. All right. Well, that that'll at least let me probe. They could have a Veil of Summer by now, it should be unfortunate. They haven't done anything, so it's not far-fetched to that. That's what they've got. They've just drawn lands. Wow. All right. Sack a clue. Fatal push? Ooh, Pulse is good, too. Pulse is very good here. All right, so let's play... 
I guess as far as basics go, there's only basic mountain left. And I think I do want to just get the mountains. So let's play this. Get the clue. Sacrifice this. Get the mountain. Pulse this. Eat some stuff on the way out, I guess. My uh, Ren and Six target makes some sense. Gain a life. Yep. All right, so does pinging them with Ren and Six change the clock at all? We're hitting them for seven. Um, assuming our threats don't grow by means of sacrificing clues, three hits is 21, which means hitting them, pinging them for th for one three separate times is actually meaningful. But I mean, the odds I, ha I activate a clue are very high, so let's uh, let's just keep plussing for now. And then hit for seven. All right, now they can't company again, even if they hit it. Winding way is good. All right, so they hit. Wow, they 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 bricked on that too. So cavern they don't keep. Abrupt decay they don't keep. Other cavern they don't keep. They didn't even play the Heritage Druid because they're in six would just destroy it on sight. Sack a clue. Not the best, but we get to play Peatland. Um, we can sacrifice the Peatland by that back with Run and Six. Not bad. Could even sack a clue now. Just hit, hit for more. Does that actually matter? It would be a hit for... We're hitting for eight now, which puts them to nine. We could put them to eight. Yeah, let's, let's sack the clue now. Don't really see a harm in it. It's more removal, always welcome. I mean, kind of a build your own adventure at this point. Already played my land, which was Peatland. Go. Sure, we knew about that one. This doesn't really matter. I can ping it with Ren and Six, but just straight doesn't matter. Okay. Um, so I guess like company is a potential concern. So Thoughtseize is a nice draw in that regard because we can kind of clear the way. Because like if they have hit it, maybe we can we can kill something and get it out of the way. All right, they hit it. Okay. It's about time they draw something good. Okay. Um, unfortunately, um, we we still gotta kind of blow this out. We can bolt the Arch Druid, um, Ren and Six kill the one one, and then they'll be forced to chump with their their remaining creature. I had bolted in response, they would not have gotten the trigger. Yeah, it, it, it really doesn't matter, but you're right.
Hmm. That's kind of funny. Uh, your the the when you spelled Archdruid incorrectly, I just assumed that you were keyboard jamming because like you would you you assumed that I knew what you were talking about. But looking at like how you spelled it, it looks like there was an effort made. Let's call that too. Why not? <laughs> All right, we did it. We beat we beat the elves. All right, so uh, let me get my uh, various things updated. There's that. Um, gotta refresh this. Got that 100% win rate. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, could I win seven matches out of seven and stop, or would I have to play the ten? You have to play all ten to qualify, because there's a uh, there's a subset of the league where up until the qualification period ends, um, there's like a separate league with cash prizes, and to qualify for those cash prizes, um, you, you need to finish all ten. All right, um, we are looking for brain stew fifty three. Bolt makes the sand good. Cavern? Humans? Sand's good versus humans. Beast. <laughs> that is a beast, isn't it? Alright, so this has got to be some kind of uh, titan. Here. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't really matter uh, killing this thing. Let's go land go. I think I think I'm getting a uh I guess blood crypt. So if I if I go blood crypt um I I can go blood crypt, stomping ground, run in six, buy back a black fetch, and then that fetch can get can it can get basic swamp. They named elf. Oh, this is okay, so this is the green white toolbox thing. All right, we get to kill that. Um, it's currently a 1-2, so we don't get to just ping it for free with the run and 6. So yeah, I'll, I'll get the Blood Crypt now. Say yes. And then between Bolt and Push, I think Bolt is probably worse long run. For example, if this ever gets big, um, push will touch it, whereas bolt won't. Inquisition a decent draw, but this might be a decent time to get the run and six down. I mean, Inquisition may not be good for much longer. Also, there is some value to killing the Grazer because that'll make the Edicts on Liliana better. Yeah, so let's let's do this. Non-zero chance I end up Inquisition. I, I fatal fatal pushing the uh, the Arboreal Grazer. <laughs> the opponent's hand quite redundant. And then we'll say go. Alright, we can fatal push that one. Bog target, I'm assuming me. Yep, alright, so we still have the fetch in play um, to buy back with the Ren, so that's that's lucky. We'll get overgrown tomb now because that lets us fatal push. 
We'll say yes. We have revolt from the fetch. Let's target this. So land here would not be half bad. That's a good one too. That'll let us thought season and take the primeval titan. Kind of locks us into getting basic swamp here. I don't want to take infinite life. But honestly, that's kind of fine. Honestly, it was it was just fortunate period to draw one mana spell that was castable. And then between the Dryad and the Titan, I think I'm going to have a harder time long term um, dealing with the Titan. Like Dryad presents a, a, a present danger, but it's not that impressive without some synergy, whereas Titan is its own synergy. <laughs> Push, push also a pretty good draw. So now we get to return the mire. Deploy our threat. It's a tracker, which triggers this. And then we should probably just get the dryad out of here pronto. Um, at this point, I'm probably just fetch shocking going down to eight. I have to get the other overgrown tomb because I need black mana. That's three dryads up, three dryads down. All right, so going pretty okay. Even if the opponent has tightened, they're they're short on the mana to cast it. Reclaimer, yeah, still tiny. Push, excellent draw. So now we can we can wipe their board or just plus a Liliana. I think I want to wipe their board because then other Liliana is better for edicting. Let's get this out of here now. I guess if I'm being technical, I should attack first because it gives them less information. All right, they scoop. Sweet. All right, so the green white deck. Um, this this should be where Ashiok shines. I imagine Clothis also going to be pro quite strong. I think Spellbomb is going to be good as well. Um, we did see lots of stuff where Fatal Push is relevant, killing all of their Dryads and also their uh, their one twos. Um, Bolt doesn't actually kill that stuff, so the the push is probably just an upgrade. Um, Damping Sphere could have some utility, but they don't play that many. Her, uh, m many bounce lands. It's kind of just like a couple of copies as far as I'm aware. But yeah, Tracker really did that snowballing thing that I that I talked about. Alright, so I think now I want to make cuts is probably Hand Disruption. They get really, really bad late game. Let's cut two of those. And then have to make three cuts somewhere in here. On the draw, I do like Liliana less, especially when they insulate with a bunch of the uh, Arboreal Grazers to make Edicts worse. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Big Daddy Snow. Not a whole lot of bouncers. Oh, that is true. They they are trying to kill Valkut and Field of the Dead. Um, I've played against the matchup um, a few times. And in, in my experience, like, you, if you Alpine Moon them, they just tutor for the other the other win con. But I mean, I guess forcing them into uh, one of the two is is a plus, right? Maybe Bolt just not going to be good. Doesn't really kill a whole lot except for their uh, their um, Elvish Reclaimers, which could even then outsize outsize the Bolts. I don't dislike just cutting another Liliana. But I need one more cut. Don't think it can be any of these ones. It might just be a creature, to be honest. Maybe even Renin 6. 
I could see cutting a Ren in six. Doesn't actually kill anything out of the opponent's deck. The games do go long though, and Ren in six can really get some advantage that way. I think I'm going to experiment cutting one. I, if I were going to cut, cut something that wasn't Ren in six, it might be a Tarmogoyf. Highly doubt they're playing Rest in Peace just because they have so many things that use their graveyard. But I mean, their, their removal is probably Path to Exile based. So Goyf, Goyf may not be the hardest hitter. Speak of the Devil. But yeah, I, I expect this matchup to be disfavored. Um, like, if, if I'm playing 100 matches, I think I'd probably win about 40 of them. Blood Braid, a nice pickup. I've got my late game power, that's for sure. The opponent also mulligan, which is a small help. So they're just going to do some tutoring now. All right, so this will get Stomping Ground. I've got my other colors set up pretty nicely. Pulse, not bad. I'll do my one two mana play. I'll read the comment in a sec. I'm just trying to get through uh, this. All right. Um. Yeah, field field of the dead is pretty absurd. It's a good one. So sacrifices any land, right? Doesn't have to be like a forest or a plains or something. Sacrifice the land, search for land. I doubt it's Bajuka Bog time. Maybe they just want to get their um their bounce land in play. Flagstones, okay. Well that's kind of a ramp spell, right? If they can sack that to the reclaimer, which they can. So maybe maybe this is a turn for Ashiok. Reshrink their dry, their uh, reclaimer as well as turn off the activation, and if they're not adding adding anything meaningful to the board, maybe Goyf is enough to um, protect it, protect the Ashiok that is. And I, I do think I'm going to be targeting them with the Ashiok as long as they don't get an untapped green source, or that this this comes in tapped. So I'll target them. The concern would have been like if they have Veil of Summer, they could um. They could, uh, ooh, Field of the Dead. If, if they have Veil of Summer, they could have uh, defended and like made sure that the uh, graveyard didn't get emptied this turn because they could cycle it off of one of my activations. All right, so let's get in the Ashiok in case their route to uh, Titan is uh, Summoner's Pact based. And I, I am just going to keep back the Tarmogoyf and defend the Ashiok. And I'll just target them ad nauseum, see if I hit any bullets. There, there goes one Titan. And the Veil. And then Eldarmi's calling the path. So four, four not bad hits. No silver bullets, though. So if they Titan this turn by not having to search for it, I can at least pulse the Titan. Titan won't be able to get any of the lands into play because I've got the Ashiok down already. I guess Forest is probably fine here. Alright, so they get to hit the Ashiok for one, I'm assuming. Dryad, yep. Goyf a pretty good draw. Now I can get the Liliana down and uh, still have a way to defend the Ashiok by playing another creature. Like, if I Blood Braid into removal spell, it's obviously pretty good, but if they have another Path to Exile, they can... They can attack my Ashiok down. 
I mean, I can Edict them and then play Tarmogoyf. This still means that they have to um, have a removal spell, but my Ashiok doesn't actually die if they keep the Dryad. So I will Liliana first, so they don't have the information that I'm playing a Goyf. Um, in the second, in, in, I'm playing that I'm playing the Goyf afterwards, and I have not played a land yet, despite being on turn four, because they they path to exiled me. Um, and then I hope they don't have a Veil of Summer. We got rid of one already. I feel like if they had a veil, they'd have just snapped it off. All right, cool. Go if hold the wall. All right, and then not gonna activate the Ashiok. There's nothing super meaningful in their yard right now, and if they can somehow get rid of my Tarmogoy, if I want my Ashiok sticking around. The Titan. Yep, I can pulse it. You cannot search. Right, they also missed land drops, so that's pretty big. Alright, so I guess I should plus first so they discard without the information that their Titan will be dying. And I think I'm just going to bin my Peatland. I want my backup threat, I want my backup removal spell, and I want my backup uh, Liliana. There goes the Sanctuary. Interesting they didn't just play that, because they could just naturally get their Field of the Dead online. I guess it might make sense that their last card in their hand is also very good. Alright, so let's get this Titan out of here. Alright, and hold the wall. If their last card's Eternal Witness, that would be a reason to uh, minus the Ashiok now. But I think I'm still on the safe side, just holding back. Liliana's going to be good for another Edict if they can't get rid of the Goyf. So I feel ahead, but definitely definitely a, precar a precarious situation just because of Field of the Dead. Wow, and they just scoop. Excellent. Alright, so uh, we're currently 3-0 in this Mana Trader series. My, uh, my no-nonsense list has been treating me well. Alright, so, uh... Yeah, be beating bad matchups does feel very good. I don't feel like that matchup is terrible, but they definitely, like, if, if they get their engine going, I'm, I'm a dog. Alright, so I did mention that I was going to record these videos in three to four match segments. Um, so I'll, I'll play one more now and then I'm going to log off um, and get that first video uploading and then I may be back on later tonight, but if not tonight, definitely tomorrow to uh, play another three or four. So let's, let's do one more for now. Got to refresh this, right? Yep. Got that perfect win rate still. Not bad. My deck is ready. Alright, we are joining a match from someone named Burgito. Maybe a hybrid between burger and burrito. B-U-R-G-I-T-O, burgito. There they are. Burrito. Yep. I wonder if it pairs you based off of um, similar record. Loris of the Dream Den. All right. Well, if they're Bogles, we have Liliana. If they're Black Red Prowess, we don't have uh, a one mana way to interact. We, we could just get steamrolled. I'm going to just hope that doesn't happen. I mean, we've got three lands and lots of spells we can cast. We're on the draw, so maybe we hit something. All right, wind up. So it looks like it might actually be Bogles. So if we if we don't get destroyed super quickly, hopefully the Lilianas can uh, stabilize us. 
All right, and it's Bogle, so we had the, the Soul Reed. So Inquisition Thoughtseize would be the best draw here. Kling, not exactly. Ravine, go. So we, we really want to dodge... Um, really just a nut draw or multiple a, a draw with multiple creatures. Like, if, if they put a lot of resources stacking on the Glade Cover Scout and then we can Edict them, that'll be good. Alright, lifelink doesn't really matter. I just want to avoid things that pump their stuff. I think I just want maximum time to, uh, to be able to Edict them. Alright, and I think I'm just going to Goyf here. So we'll go Black Leave, Goyf. And they actually have to do something to get their thing uh, past the Goyf. Goyf is just bigger right now. So as far as game one is concerned, um, pretty ideal so far. Obviously would have liked the one mana disruption. Swamp. Alright, so barring another threat, which I'm assuming they don't have unless they've just drawn it. Okay, they haven't. Alright, so this is this is pretty good. Um gonna get to edict their creature. Their Luris can eventually get it back, but we've got Kling to interact with that threat. Bloodbraid excellent, but let's get the Liliana down. <laughs> they just straight scoop to the Liliana. Awesome. Alright, so Bogles. Um, as far as Leyline of Sanctity goes, I think I just have to hope they don't have it. Um, I did have a match in a league very recently where um, Bitter Blossom basically won me the game on its own because the opponent didn't have a trample enchantment and I was able to basically fog him every single turn. Um, I don't think this is going to be a terminate matchup. Bolt can at least go to face. Push really not that great either. I mean, it has utility in that it can they they can still kill the Dryad Arbor, which can insulate them versus edicts, and um, it can also still kill the Core Spirit Dancer. I mean, it's probably it's probably just better. I mean, brutality I guess can take um, can take Path to Exile from the hand. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking right now, Nick. You and I we think alike. Um, I mean, our hand is set up pretty well versus them. Colgon's Command's only real value, I guess. Buying back a creature could be a thing, even though their removal is Path to Exile based. Um, I think I'll cut a push. I mean, Brutality is really only use is getting getting rid of Path to Exile. Yeah, I mean, I do like push because it, it kills the it kills the um the core Spirit Dancer, but that's it, right? Like that and Dryad Arbor, really. Maybe I want the cloth this just because uh, it could interact with their Luris. Like like cloth this might just be better than something, right? Yeah, brutality hits face. It doesn't hit face unfortunately if they have leyline, but leyline I'm just gonna have to pray they don't have. My only out to leyline is pulsing it. Yeah, brutality doesn't kill a spirit dancer if it's enchanted, which is makes me nervous. So maybe maybe it's this. I could see Clothis definitely being too slow, but in a, in a matchup where um, maybe maybe it comes down to their Luris being good, maybe Clothis can uh, can shut that off. We can prioritize eating their creatures. Who knows? Um, similarly, Spellbomb can do something. Maybe Spellbomb was just better than. Uh, let's, I guess let's trim a bolt, and uh, we can trim. I guess Colgon's command's kind of expensive. Kind of like that. Let's give it a go. Yeah. I also like how Brutality can kind of convert your bad resources resources into something more preferable. I mean, if they've got the Ley Line, then they've got the Ley Line. That's the nature of the beast. Alright, well, we've got Liliana, so please no Ley Line. They don't have it. They could Veil of Summer to defend that way. You got your thing, yep. I mean, I, I can't mulligan a hand with a Liliana. It's just not allowed. 
So Inquisition Thoughtseize, best case here. I guess there's a chance I want to cling to dust just to uh, just to cycle. And I guess if I want to have the ability to cycle no matter what, I should play Verdant, because that's something I can target. If it ends up not mattering, I'll fetch an Overgrown Tomb. But yeah, second second threat from the opponent would also be kind of disastrous, because they can load up one of them and then sacrifice the smaller one. They did snap keep a 7-card hand, so I'm, I'm concerned. Yep. Griff Spoon, another card that um, is good with uh, good against the Clean of Dust. They didn't attack? That must have been a mistake. I can feel them typing in chat right now. They just scooped? Just straight shame scoop? Alright. I mean, I'll take it. Alright, so... Uh, Current record 4-0. Alright, so as mentioned, that's going to be it for me for now. Um, I'm going to be back on the next video or two is going to be... Um, it, it's going to be uh, just me continually trying to qualify for this Mana Traders event. Um, yeah, so I mean, I guess I could do a deck tech. Uh, there, there's a chance I want to make changes between this and the next video, but probably not. Um, so, I mean, everything felt really, really smooth. Liliana is absolutely absurd. We drew a Colagon's Command in round one when we really needed it versus Eldrazi Tron, which was nice. Um, Tracker Tracker has proved to be absolutely excellent. Um, it was it was a huge game, uh, game piece player um, and I think, like, two or three of our matches so far. And there's only one of them, too. Um, Terminates have been fine, not excellent. Um, oozes have been great, Glyphs have been great, the Splitter removal has been excellent. Um, there have been multiple games where I wished I had more pushes than Bolts, and we've drawn more pushes because uh, we're playing three a 3-3 three, three split, as opposed to the usual two, and the Klings have been fine, Thoughtseize has been fine, Inquisition has been fine, Sideboards have been great, we brought in pretty much everything to great effect so far. And uh, yeah, I mean, right, right before this league, uh, right before I started this event, um, in this video, I, I really went into the metagame breakdown that I showed you in the beginning, and I was like, what would be good? And I kind of, like, developed a sideboard plan, so I wasn't going just going in blind and, like, kind of doing it on the fly. Um, and so I would at least have some idea of what I wanted to do. And, I mean, so far that idea has come through. We are, we're 4-0. So uh, I'm going to log off for now, as mentioned, and um, see you guys again back here real soon for the next set of Mana Traders games. So until then, have a good one.